Hello, uh, so I am Alberto. I am co-founder of a small uh, company that offers uh, development and um, system integration services. And today I will present you uh, a framework and an application that we built uh, to bring back fun in, into the development of web, app, web applications. So uh, what I mean with web, web application, usually uh, web application today means many things, but for the purpose of this, uh, this talk, uh, I mean um, those applications that are usual, usually developed today to replace uh, desktop applications that used to access and relational databases and show um, data to the user and let the user uh, filters, uh, query, sort, uh, they usually show many data at once. They usually offer advanced filtering, sorting capabilities and so on. And usually they, uh, those applications are used for data entry and so they show uh, very complex forms and uh, they show master detail tables and so on. I think that uh, such application have uh, a, a narrower, uh, a narrower uh, user base than, than public uh, web, web, uh, web page publishing and so on. Usually they are, uh, those applications are called single page applications e, uh, many times mm, they are installed on premise or they are, they are installed on, on cloud and then used inside an intranet or so on so uh, the, the the framework we developed uh, is its goal is to serve those, these kind of uh, applications. It's not to serve 10,000 web pages to anonymous users. Usually, uh, the user of our application is always a known user. So it, uh, the, first, the first thing it does, he does is to enter his uh, credentials and log in to the system. So, uh, to, today, how it, it's built an application using Python tools? Usually, uh, we start with uh, developing the database structure and so on, and then we pick our favorite uh, server framework like uh, Django, Pyramid, uh, Turbo Gears, uh, uh, Flask and so on. Maybe we develop uh, an, an object relational mapper on top of, of our uh, database, but it's not um, not always needed. And, and usually we expose those data using uh, using uh, REST services or get and post uh, entry points and so on. Uh, but, uh, but then, because uh, they are web apps, then we, we choose, we pick a, a JavaScript framework and we develop uh, all the application level logic to, with, with JavaScript. So all the user interaction all the, the, the flow of the, of the user inside the application and so on is coded in JavaScript. Uh, how many of you do that, uh, for example? Is it fun? Is it still fun? So I don't think uh, that it's, it's so fun. 
And uh, uh, yes, uh, dealing with JavaScript is inevitable because uh, there is nothing else on the on the on the browser, and but uh, it's stressful because uh, it has many inconsistencies, uh, many things that you uh, maybe learn one time and then you you forget uh, something you know about uh, its base types, uh, not a number, and so on, uh, and. Every time you, you approach the, the development of a uh, JavaScript web application, um, usually the, the scenario as of, of uh, available toolkits is changed because it changes with a very fast pace. And uh, usually the JavaScript community uh, reinvents the wheel every time in, uh, in a in a fancier, uh, more, uh, more quick uh, way, and so on. But uh, uh, for us, uh, that we want to code in, uh, in Python, uh, it's, uh, it seems uh, not so good to always uh, learn a new JavaScript uh, framework, uh, maybe the version two of the, the um, JavaScript that we learned some months ago that changed the uh, language from JavaScript to TypeScript and, uh, and so on. And, and many times the, the libraries of, of JavaScript libraries have compared to, to those available in Python and to the standard library, do have very poor quality. Uh, we, uh, you end up uh, installing tens of megabytes, hundreds of megabytes of JavaScript code just to, to, to let your toolkit work and so um, sometimes you don't understand why you have to, to install all, all, all those things. So uh, many of you can say that, that uh, ES6 is better because it's at classes, promises, iterators, generators. Many, some of these, these features are come from Python and also they, it has map and set uh, and that are implemented natively that uh, it, for the first time you can put not just uh, strings into dictionary keys but you can use uh, every, any kind of object, object as key and this is uh, surely an advantage. And, uh, but then, for example, uh, when I learn about a weak map uh, on weak set, uh, I, I thought that uh, they were compar uh, comparable to, do to those available in, um, into, into the Python standard library. And so I said, fantastic, uh, very, very, they were what I was, was, I was waiting for because uh, uh, then uh, I can I can keep um, weak uh, links to objects without uh, worrying when when that to to free those links and so uh, it's very nice feature. But then you learn uh, I discovered that for example uh, weak weak maps uh, you cannot know what's inside a weak map. Uh, just uh, if you if if you know what's inside a weak map is is that is because you have put it there. So uh, it's not possible to to ask a, ask a weak uh, weak map for its keys. It's not possible to it iterate over its its keys or its values and so on. It's just possible to check given a, uh, an object if, if to check if it's a key in that object. And it seems uh, incredibly wrong to me, but uh, the, JavaScript, the JavaScript community uh, found that, that uh, a feature instead. And so 
uh, they some of the more one of the more prominent uh, JavaScript developers said that uh, that that it it as it is a, a security feature, something that you can that it, it's really useful because you you can have an object that uh, no one can look into uh, but uh, but i think that uh, it is uh, a misunderstanding of what a weak map should should do it should uh, firstly uh, give you a way to use weak links weak references to other objects uh, and then maybe a being uh, used a security property or security object because you cannot look into it. So uh, JavaScript, even Emascript uh, ES6, has many, many things that seems wrong from a, a Python, a Python side. And uh, some, uh, we, if you read uh, blogs and articles around in the internet, uh, some uh, suggest that you should use, for example, TypeScript, which is a very, very good language that has interfaces, types. Uh, but for example, a few days ago, I found uh, this example in a um, Reddit blog actually when they were uh, they were explaining why they chose the typescript and uh, you see that code uh, where uh, an, a foo is declared as an, an array that can contain just birds and uh, and the next and the next uh, row they they add an, an animal which is a the, the the superclass of bird and uh, the the TypeScript uh, interpreter and uh, checker is okay with that. So while uh, while uh, having types may help uh, maintaining the code and so on, the 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 language that has type in its name fails a check a very single a simple block of code so uh, again uh, i would say what <laughs> it seemed very very strange to me and uh, that's that's because i know that uh, that i have we have to deal with, with javascript typescript uh, a coffee script, uh, what do you want script, but uh, I will put it in a cage and control it from, from very, I will like to, at least. So uh, it's enough for uh, of, about talking about uh, JavaScript, so let's get back to Python. And what's the, the role of Python in modern web applications? Usually, uh, when you have such a, such a um, separation between application logic and data access logic, one the first developed in JavaScript and the second developed in, uh, in, uh, in Python, the Python uh, server that you develop uh, in one of such uh, application servers that I told you before is used uh, like a data hub. Uh, you expose uh, your data in some, um, some way and really for me and for us the, the fun part of, of developing applications stops when we develop our, our um, database structure. We, we confront with the, with the customer about the, the domain data and so on. And really what comes after uh, the database structure, the exposing, the create a REST API, create a GET or POST API, it's, it's boring. 
we, we do really need that. When do, you re, do we really need uh, raised APIs and so on? Uh, we think that we need, uh, uh, we need uh, REST APIs just when, uh, when you, your service as to your application as to interface with other services uh, by using standardized uh, interfaces such as REST, uh, as REST and so on. Or if you give your, uh, an API to your user to, to use and to interact uh, with the, for in interaction with the, your application instead of using the, the GUI. This is uh, the, the normal way of uh, how Django, Pyramid, Flask, uh, and you name it, do they work um, more or less. More or less, they all, uh, they all wait for, um, for um, a request and then they will, uh, the request contains all the, um, the data, uh, the context data that uh, your application, your uh, controller, your handler need to, needs to understand uh, what it, it, it uh, should uh, do, and then uh, it retrieves the data from the database. Uh, uh, it uh, builds up a, a response and stream it back to the client. Maybe it saves some, some data in a session that usually is used like a, a poor man dictionary and, and then uh, your objects are destroyed and your system is waiting for the next uh, query, uh, next uh, get, post, or uh, uh, patch, uh, and so on. Uh, how were the, the things, how are the things, because uh, we, we, there are still, uh, still <laughs> those uh, toolkits are still used today to do desktop application. How were things um, with, uh, how is developing uh, uh, an application with desktop toolkits? Those uh, that were, that, uh, are now supplemented by, by web application and so on. Usually, developing application with, with PyQt and PyGTK, uh, the role of, of the GTK or Qt toolkit and Python uh, is uh, they, they, their, in, their interaction is much more tighter. tighter. Tighter than 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 with web apps. In web apps, we have a, the 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 application logic completely moved to the client. But but instead, in uh, in normal desktop application, we we have uh, uh, the that the the application logic. Logic is completely driven by by Python with uh, the help of of classes and UI widgets that the tool toolkit provides us. So uh, they are very different from today web application. Our uh, we found ourselves in. At the, at the end of the last year, in the need of uh, uh, decide if we were maintaining an, an, an old application developed with uh, one of those, uh, those uh, frameworks. It's much, uh, much older. Indeed, it was developed in, in, in ZOOP. In ZOOP, or to, we have made a de 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 decision instead of replacing it with a new app uh, and we we wanted to to bring back the fun into to web development so uh, we we developed a, a framework from scratch and they, they, the idea was is 
to use an asynchronous system not just to achieve uh, better concurrency, uh, but also to ease uh, the maintenance on the server of the state of the, the application. We, uh, we thought to have two equal system on the, on the server and the client and to have them uh, freely talk to each other using modern RPC systems that can use uh, HTTP as, be as a backend protocol, but, uh, but that, that uh, they abstract you from the notion of uh, having an HTTP, and even they work without, uh, without HTTP at all. So, uh, we um, we um, we developed a, an, an, uh, this framework, Raccoon, with uh, Postgres and um, Postgres at, at the uh, at the bottom level. All the all the the framework has to be uh, asynchronous, and so we we chose AsyncPG to drive uh, to the data access to the the the, the database and uh, SQL Alchemy to construct the queries. Crossbar uh, has been chosen to, um, as the intercommunication backbone between the two pieces on the client and the server, and uh, AEO HTTP is used as an HTTP publisher for the stuff that cannot be transferred via, for the initialization part and so on. Then we used uh, SQL Alchemy, but not DRM because the object relational mapper cannot be used with uh, a sync code. And, and the RPC, we chose Crossbar because it allows it uh, it allows your system to interface not just between uh, Python and, uh, and JavaScript, but between many, many different languages, and uh, as uh, both a twisted and a, and a syncio client uh, uh, library. And as such nice features like uh, uh, error transfer between the, the, the caller and the colleague. If the colleague uh, raises an error, this error is brought back to, to the, the caller and so on. It's really nice and has many features. So we designed an, an API that, uh, our API as uh, composed by a tree of nodes object that where the initialization is split in two parts because uh, un the under init cannot be an asynchronous method. So we have to split the initialization in two parts and node is a, an, uh, an, a mixing class that just deal with the communication part of the problem. The rest of the, of the, uh, of the the object is supposed to do, uh, it's your application logic and so on. What the node class gives you is a way to declare uh, callable things and, uh, and signals and handlers at the, at the class level with the, the curators and so on. And it does that in a way that it's possible to it's possible to, um, to construct your, uh, your object trees with the relative uh, references to each other and then attach them to, uh, to the, the crossbar uh, connection machinery and have them published on the, uh, have them published. Here uh, you see some the mm, nodes and the the methods and the signals. Signals are events that 
that the uh, nodes al allows you to, to declare and to use. So this, this is, um, let's jump to an example of, uh, of, the, of a test and you see that uh, uh, at the line 12 uh, we have uh, we have the first node, which is just a node that's used for structure. And then we have two other nodes, the th second and, uh, and the third, with where we customized uh, where we, cu we customized uh, our um, and we added some handlers, some signals, an handler, a signal, and a, a Mm, a call and so on. Those uh, uh, the the node is automatically uh, automatically is automatically instrumented to expose those methods. And you see that, f for example, the the line code third, uh, line uh, seventeen, uh, that uh, that calls. Uh, the third, uh, the third node with with a with a relative uh, path. It, it depends on where the, the, those nodes are are mounted into, are bound to. There is a base path. This is test, and then first is bound to, to base plus first. That will become fla mm, test dot first. And then the third is, is bound to base dot third. And then the, the first made node adds the second as with the name second. And so its, it's uh, node path will become for, uh, test uh, dot, uh, dot first dot second. And so you saw before that um, that the handler on line uh, 25 listened for for the, the 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 signal on first second and all th th these are relative uh, uh, relative addresses that when they are re realized when the 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 node is connected to to the machinery which is uh, in line, uh, in line 37 and 38 and so on. Uh, and this is available, available also in JavaScript. This is actual JavaScript code and it is in JavaScript code because we use uh, uh, a tool we made to, to compile Python to JavaScript. And uh, uh, punto. Uh, yes, uh, it compiles. We use the same syntax, the same abstraction, and then we compile them to to JavaScript uh, to a JavaScript that also a very old uh, browser can 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 run, and that has no asynchronous, no promises, and so on. This is actually an uh, anatomy of uh, our, a session of uh, our application user, our user session, how it, it starts. There is the service that is the only thing that exposes both HTTP and crossbar uh, and connects to crossbar. And then each other side can um, can talk to each other very, uh, very, uh, very freely. I have many more slides, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm out of time. So if you are interested, we have uh, developed the application is nearly complete. I cannot show you it uh, now, but uh, if you are interested, uh, we will, uh, I can show you, we can give you an access and a demo access to, to the application. Uh, we will um, probably uh, publish this framework when it's, it's, it's ready, it's in good shape. We need to separate, completely separate it from, from the application and 
but uh, it's going very well. Uh, it are as more for a thousand four hundred commits. So uh, if you need, if you want or uh, see the code, just ask me or uh, drop me a line. Thank you. Thanks, Albert, for your presentation. Questions for Alberto? No? Thanks again. Thanks, Alberto. <laughs>